Simply depress the guide button on the center of your controller and you will see a selection. Very recently, Xenia started to pick up steam after having lagged behind PlayStation emulation for a number of years. There's still a lot of work to do. For example, the Gears of War games have a number of visual glitches, so I can't showcase them yet, but as soon as they're ready, I will inform you guys. But let's not waste any more time and move on to the list. Unleashed was initially going to be a sequel to Sonic Adventure 2, but was ultimately deemed too different from its predecessor. It was built on the Hedgehog engine, which had been designed in-house by Sega. The game's levels were deprecated on PS2 and Wii to improve performance on those systems, so the best way to play would be on 7th gen consoles like the 360. Emulating on PC is another option, but not necessarily superior yet. On RPCS3 the performance can be a little hit or miss, and on Xenia the resolution can be upscaled by tweaking settings through a config file, but it's not recommended. This Castlevania game, which was developed by a Spanish studio, tells the story of Gabriel Belmont as he endeavors to wipe out an evil order known as the Lords of Shadow. Hideo Kojima did help with the overall design. Just like the 2D games that preceded it, there's plenty of combat and platforming to keep the player busy. Lords of Shadow is more of a reboot than a prequel of the series, but it tries to be faithful to the series lore. Depending on who you ask, this was either the best game in the franchise, or the second best after Halo 2. Either way, Xbox consolidated their dominance over Sony, with over 14 million copies sold of Halo 3 since 2007. The single player campaign wasn't perfect, and several gamers expressed their distaste for playing as the Arbiter during some sections, but the multiplayer was extraordinarily popular. Kid. I didn't realize he had a health potion. Uh, my name is Butters the Merciful. I'm a paladin. I live right next door to you. We should be friends. South Park, The Stick of Truth is a turn-based role-playing game based on the popular television series. Trey Parker and Matt Stone wrote the entire script, and they were also involved during development of the game. Although you play with a brand new character, you do get to meet several others from the show, like Cartman and Butters. As expected with any episode from South Park, the story does go off the rails at some point, but it's always a fun and whimsical experience. When Geometry Wars throws everything at you, it turns into an explosion of colors. It's a frenetic twin-stick shooter that's always been synonymous with the Xbox Marketplace. In fact, it was one of the most popular games on the platform, thanks to its easy pick-up-and-play nature. And it was exclusive to Microsoft's platforms for nearly a decade, having been released for the 360 and PC, until Dimensions finally got a PlayStation port in 2014. Burnout 3 Takedown already moved away from simply being a racing game, adding vehicular combat as part of its gameplay. And Revenge refined this even more, diversifying the mechanics with new features like ramming traffic sideways. It should be noted that this game is available as part of Xbox's backwards compatibility catalog, and that is still the optimum way to play. But if you don't have an Xbox, Xenia handles Burnout Revenge fairly well. I have to confess, I lost interest after the third movie, and the games didn't give me many tingles either. But I can understand why some people play Saw. It relies on decent puzzles, and the crossover between the movies and games adds some much-needed complexity to the story. 
saw two plays off just after the events of the first movie, and mostly follows Michael Tapp as he tries to uncover reasons for his father's death. In case you don't know, his father was the protagonist of the first game. Very upsetting journey, but I'm rid of Pris, or whatever she's become. At least the place I've landed is somewhat familiar. American McGee returned with this psychological horror game, which follows on from the original. Alice is older in the sequel, and has endured considerable mental trauma following the death of her family from a fire. Her eventual return to Wonderland is an escape from reality, but her memories haunt her throughout the story. The game is also available for Xbox gamers via backwards compatibility, but Xenia handles the emulation just as well. Can't ever picture you winning. <laughs> Fight one! Ready? Just like RPCS3, Xenia has no problem emulating Virtua Fighter 5. And like I said before, this is one of the best 3D fighting games of all time. It's also available on PS4 and has received an update recently. I actually compared the game on Xenia and RPCS3 a while back, so watch it if you're curious which version to emulate on PC. There was one game that PC gamers always wanted to play, but couldn't because of console exclusivity, and that was Red Dead Redemption. For the longest time, Xenia and RPCS3 competed for honors to see which emulator would first run the game in a playable state. This video probably gives away the answer. Still, it took a while, because only now can Red Dead maintain a decent frame rate in its open world. It's better late than never, so finally we can enjoy the game. Get the band or Crash, Mind Over Mutant is not a platformer like the original games on PlayStation. Instead, it's more of a beat-em-up with platforming sections. Mind Over Mutant is a direct sequel to Crash of the Titans, and curiously was never released on the PS3. Its main gimmick is your ability to take control of titans, which are massive monsters that Crash must first defeat in order to use against other enemies. The game was also released on the Wii and PS2. The point of wet is to use stylish moves to trigger bullet time. This can be achieved by sliding, jumping, or wall running. It's vaguely reminiscent of Max Payne and Stranglehold, but with a much heavier emphasis on being acrobatic. And in fact, the game is a lot harder if you simply try to run and gun, because you'll get mowed down by enemies. This can be problematic when you have to perform moves in confined areas with lots of things that can get in the way, but I suppose that's the challenge of the game. Despite looking childish in presentation, Castle Crashers is anything but easy. It requires a lot of skill with the controller and a lot of good timing. It can be played single player or co-op. There is a remastered version available for Steam, Xbox One and PS4 and it comes highly recommended for fans of hack and slash video games. think we're alone. Set shortly after the events of Resident Evil 4, Revelations follows counterterrorism agents Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield as they try to uncover the truth behind a bioterrorist organization that plans to infect the Earth's oceans with a virus. The game features a single player mode where the player must complete a series of episodes that involve solving puzzles and defeating enemies. At times it feels like a budget Resident Evil game, but its story is decent enough. What is this? 
Vilgax Attacks is the second game in the Ben 10 Alien Force series. It was released on every console, except for the PS3, which missed out for some unknown reason. As for gameplay, Alien Force plays very much like every other Ben 10 game before it. You get to change into alien beings, each one having unique strengths and weaknesses. And it's up to you to decide how to use these alien powers to accomplish tasks. Metal Gear Solid HD Collection is a compilation of remasters for Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. The core play mechanics and story for all games remain unchanged with the HD editions. For the remastering, all three games underwent graphic overhauls to allow them to support 720p resolutions and 60 frames per second on home consoles. This is one of the best remakes in the history of gaming. On 7th gen consoles, Alone in the Dark's level design allows for a lot more free roaming than on the PS2 and Wii. It's a good game, but it would have been even better if the controls had been different. The right analog stick is used to swing weapons, unless you're in first person mode, in which case it's used to simply turn the character. For a game from 2008, it has decent graphics though, so you can do a lot worse than Alone in the Dark. Sending tidal waves crashing to the shores. The ninja rose up to defend their village. Naruto, Rise of a Ninja, was the first game in the franchise not to be developed by a Japanese studio. It has an interesting combination of fighting, 3D platforming, and role-playing modes. The story covers the first 80 episodes of Naruto's original series, right up to the Konoha Invasion arc, and the graphics resemble the same cel-shaded art style of previous Naruto games. It's a really satisfying experience if you're into the anime. Xbox has always struggled in the Japanese market, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. Lost Odyssey was developed by a Japanese studio and published exclusively by Microsoft. The game has good graphics and production values, but the gameplay is perhaps too traditional, relying on turn-based combat and random battles. Even so, Japanese role-playing games were a rare sight on the console, so Lost Odyssey was a great achievement. The flat-out games have always been seen as the off-road versions of Burnout. It's true to an extent, but I suppose it's more similar to modern-day arcade racing games like Wreckfest. Vehicles can get severely damaged and deformed from crashing, although this won't affect how fast you can go around the track. I personally think that the series peaked with Flat Out 2, but Ultimate Carnage isn't bad either. In fact, it's a lot of fun. Send SWAT to back me up if they ever show. I'm giving you a direct order, Detective. You go in there, I'm taking your shield and your gun. Here, you point it in that direction, and you pull this to make it go bang. Feel free. Dead to Rights Retribution is a reboot of the franchise. The protagonist has a similar personality to John McClane from Die Hard and has a trusty dog which helps him to dispense with criminals. The game is a bit overly violent at times, but if you can overlook the shock value, there is a decent experience to be had. Dead to Rights Retribution was only released on the 360 and PS3. The first Bayonetta was developed by Platinum Games, who was the same studio responsible for Metal Gear Rising and Astral Chain. In Bayonetta you are a witch who possesses magical attacks and can use her hair to summon demons. It plays just like Devil May Cry, and borrows heavily from that series, but that shouldn't be a surprise since the lead designer actually directed the first Devil May Cry. Subsequent titles have all been published by Nintendo, so Bayonetta is now exclusive to the Switch. A trauma point. It'll glow a bright purple.
The first game in the Condemned series was exclusive to Microsoft's platforms, including the PC. Criminal Origins was heavily influenced by movies such as Seven and Silence of the Lambs during production. For that reason, it has a very dark atmosphere. The biggest strength of the game is its puzzle-solving elements and combat, which allows the player to use almost anything from the environment to fight enemies with. The story isn't as great as it should be, but that doesn't matter when the rest of the game is so good. You've grown Kakarot, but there's no mistaking it's you! Dragon Ball Raging Blast is a cel-shaded 3D fighter that allows players to play as characters within the Dragon Ball universe. The story spans from the Scion Saga up until the Kid Buu Saga. Battle frames also include what-if scenarios that never occurred in the series. This was also the first time Broly and Vegeta could unlock Super Scion 3 powers in a Dragon Ball game. There is no lock-on feature, and the controls are somewhat dumbed down when compared to previous DBZ titles, but it's a fun experience. As the licensing deal between Tony Hawk and Activision was set to expire by the end of 2015, Pro Skater 5 was hastily developed within a few months and released unfinished. It would eventually be patched to completion, but the series lost a lot of credibility because of this. Having said that, the game is now in really good shape and worth a playthrough, especially for fans of skateboard games. You know, that's not how we do things around here. Who taught you to race like that? Kachika! Kachika! Chick Hicks. That's right. Cars Race Orama is a racing adventure game in which Lightning McQueen participates in five non-linear open worlds, including Radiator Springs. In each area McQueen can participate in multiple race types, including circuit races, relay, and point-to-point. -point. McQueen's bumper, hood, side skirts, and spoiler can be visually upgraded. Additionally, his wheels and paint livery can be changed via unlocks. This is strictly for the kiddies, though, because there's not much to keep adults invested. The seventh seal was not broken! Darksiders plays off on a post-apocalyptic Earth, where mankind faces near extinction and angels fight a losing battle against the demon hordes for control over the world. The game's inspiration is from the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, with the player taking the role of war. Gameplay is mostly hack and slash, with some platforming in between. I finished it on PC several years ago, and it gets insanely hard later on during the campaign. Even normal difficulty is challenging, so be aware that the game will test your patience. I've covered this game on several occasions, and this will be the last time. Just like RPCS3, Xenia has no issue running Hunted, the Demon's Forge. The story is usual high fantasy fare, but the gameplay is generally fun. You can switch characters or even give them orders on rare opportunities. Not every game needs to be the best ever, and Hunted exemplifies a solid AA experience. After Burner Climax was a popular game on arcade machines, and then got a second wind on the Xbox Marketplace. It's very much a casual experience, but one that's going to test your reflexes. It was one of the first playable games on Xenia. <laughs> Last but not least, we get to Forza 2, which surprisingly runs flawlessly on the emulator. Xenia has certainly come a long way since 2015, and we should remember that the developers work for free. I would like to thank you guys for watching to the end. Please remember to give a like for the algorithm. See you next time and goodbye.